Sure. Well, I was just demoing Legal Markdown, um, and this is a project that I worked on a couple of months ago. Um, it's based off of actually a port of a project called uh, Legal Markdown that was written by uh, Casey Coleman. This was the idea here was to create a, uh, a JavaScript entirely within the browser experience where people would be able to write in Markdown um, and uh, have it apply for legal documents. Um, and part of the theory, the theory here was that lawyers ultimately, everyone says, oh, lawyers want to work in word processors like Microsoft Word or you know, their pre-existing document processing systems. Um, my theory is a little bit different, which is that lawyers want to be able to control the document that they're working with. So they want to have, uh, they want to apply, um, they want to be able to really rigidly structure their work, and so that manifests itself typically in terms of white space. They want to make sure that the headings are proper and that everything looks right on the page. Um, but as we increasingly move to the digital format, that means that they're going to want to have greater semantic control of, of what they're writing. Um, and so the, the premise of Legal Markdown is basically, um, is there a way to make the actual document construction process easier for lawyers so that they can do things that otherwise are pains in the butt. So for example, when you're writing lists, as we know, when you add something, yeah. it changes it from one, two, and three, and four. Um, and you know, happily developers are much smarter than lawyers in certain respects, so they created a way that um, automatically says, oh, well, I know that this is a new, um, I know this is new, what's going on? So, and it automatically adds the new section mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, lawyers don't always work in nice ordered lists that are numbers, and so we created this way of actually creating um, things that are more uh, legal in nature. So this is sections, but it can just as easily be um, custom configured and so that it looks like article. So it's a kind of latich for lawyers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Okay. Um, and so then when you go down here, this is now changed to Article 1. Mm -hmm. um, and the other aspect is that it has built in certain features that lawyers use. For example, citations to other uh, uh, the primary legal materials. Um, and if you wanted to add it, you wanted to change the citation mm -hmm. so that it's actually going to be 534 instead of 531. It automatically fixes it and puts you to Section 2-534. Um, so the... That's an example of one type of project. Now, this is very, you know, very high level. Uh, the, one cool thing about actually this, appreciate this. So this actually saves to, uh, allows you to save to gist um, and to anonymous gist and download the file. But one great thing is um, it has O authorization. So if you save to a gist and somebody else can go directly to that permanent link. I'm not signed in, so let me just go ahead and use an anonymous one. Um, save to anonymous gist. Now they have this permanent URL, and mm -hmm. it would actually say the same thing. So um, let me go ahead and make a change. The links to the code, how did it know where to point? Uses regular expressions. But that um, means that you can feed it and say, oh, oh so I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. That's a totally, that's a, that's a really cool app. Um, so I've just made a change, and now I want to save again to anonymous gist, and you'll see that the number changed up here. What it's actually done is this forked um, the the, uh, the gist and created a new gist. But to the end user, it's basically just saved. It doesn't know that what it's done is actually created a new new repository or a new file or a new gist in this case. Um, and one of the things that I think is really critical for sort of for building tools for lawyers is that it has to be a seamless user experience so that lawyers don't worry themselves about what's actually happening underneath the surface. But that's what's happening here. So if you went to um, if you actually went to the gist, uh, I think this is under anonymous. That's how it works. Right, so there's the, the gist. In theory, you'd be able to do revisions um, so that you could see what was done. So you can actually have your source, uh, you can have your version control system that's built in the background that nobody even knew happened. Um, so that's that's one sort of project. Um, the um, the citation is actually a, a node module called Citation. Um, it's on a public repository. It's open source. Uh, and basically the way that it works um, is it takes a citation 
and it parses the citation using regular expressions to generate um, information about the citation. So it tells you what type it is, the match, the index, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you can apply that to um, the particular reference point. So if you want to point it at a site right, section, yeah. it can, you can just build in the links. So um, that, can we just see what that? Yeah, so this is for the DC code. This is DC code 32-701. Now this is agnostic about li where the, li uh, the library is. So if we go to the, um, the source code for Legal Markdown, for example, um, and one of the great things about open source is that you can show your code. One of the downsides is that people can see your code. <laughs> um, so forgive whatever is about to happen. Um, I think it is under app. And I know you're short on time, so I'll keep it in there. Um, so somewhere on here. All right. So this is where I've added the make DC code. So this is just a little. Okay. Um, you plug in the citation. It generates the title and the section and plunks you into the permanent, the permanent URL there. Can you just see what the, uh, the HTML is like? Is there, is there style? Is, are things built in style sheets or? Oh, oh, right. So yeah, going back to the actual. So this is kind of neat. This uses what's called React, which is a framework that was built by Facebook, um, and uses React JS to basically handle states um, and to uh, make sure that whenever you have data going from one state to another, it shifts all the way down. So that's that's how Legal Markdown works. Is that basically it takes the state from each of these variables. And Populates all the Do you have a measure of how many people are using that already? Not that many. Okay. Um, but you, you want it, right? Yeah, I mean, ideally, I'd, I'd want people to use it. Part of it right now is that um, I uh, it cannot handle white space. And I think that this is a big problem for lawyers, is that mm. markdown is essentially bad white space. Yeah. Um, and so I'm trying to figure out a way to imbue white space into, uh, into legal markdown. That's actually a bigger challenge than I realized initially. Nice. Um, but so yeah, that's that's citation and uh, the DC code. Um, we also have this thing called authentication, which I'm going to be working with MIT on. Um, and this is a way to basically generate um, a hash value and a digital signature of, a, uh, of any uh, random document. So here it looks normal, but I'm going to go ahead and log in. It's using Django um, on the background uh, in the back to power it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add a file, and browse, and go and pick up. I'll do the MIT talk that I was working on. Here we go. So now I'm adding my MIT talk. It's basically a little long. Um, Laying it down. <laughs> assuming that my box still works. Okay, here we go. So now it's automatically generated hash information for it. Um, it's got a little digital signature, um, so then I can go ahead and get a list of the hash values. GPG signed. Sure. Nice integration there. Yep. So it looks like, here we go, I just added something. Um, oh, that's really fascinating. So when it uploads the Word document, it breaks it out into its constituent parts. So you can see that I just uploaded just now all of these documents. So there's the MIT doc, but it also uploaded the sub-documents. And this is what I think I was telling someone about, that the docx is actually not just the doc, yeah, it's a zip file, file with all these other things. So it's loaded all of these things already into it. Yeah. So that's that's that document. And so now if I want to check the file, um, I can go ahead and take the Word document, MIT talk that I just loaded up, boom, and it's valid. Um, and there's the details that I wanted to do. And if I wanted to drag and drop something else, this is not in the system, it's going to say it doesn't match any documents. Um, so that's... That's it. That's the at nice. a very high level. Um, it's supposed to be pretty simple and pretty easy to use, so that it can be readily deployed. Yeah, I hope it will be used. Yeah. No, this one. This one will be used. Um, this one is um, essentially production in the next like what, three yeah. months. In what? So what? Oh yeah. So that's that's a great question. So the reason that this exists is that there's a, a mandate that's likely to well, it's going to come down in the District of Columbia. It's already been law in certain states. Um, that all primary legal materials um, will have to meet three requirements. They'll have to be authenticated, they'll have to be uh, accessible, and they have to be preserved. Um, and authentication, up until this particular app was built, meant a PDF digital signature. 
um, that was like the only acceptable solution for um, authentication. And so working with uh, the US Open Data Institute and some, um, some developers, um, we built the authentication services mm -hmm. as basically a, a pilot. Um, and in the next three months, we're going to try to really ramp it up and get it to be production grade so that we can deploy it for the official DC code. Nice. Um, and so, yeah, that's that. Cool. Yeah, I might say that the, um, if this um, signature thing uh, that you just saw yeah. is um, maybe seems simple and kind of cool, it's subversive and profound in its importance. Yeah. Um, no, so because now it's the official authoritative law is now from the source, the government, on a page you can in open data that you can tear yeah. a data REST interface. And also it's clean the way you did it with yeah. op all open source yeah. GPG on, and we did a hackathon you did a hackathon that some of us came down to in DC to help hack it and to get up and make it good and every jurisdiction yeah. can use it. Yeah. It's like part of this movement, the free yeah. law yeah, yeah. movement. And what's the other great thing about this particular solution is that it's explicitly done to eliminate the arguments that authenticating government documents is 